what's going on? I am so excited that you are watching this video. And here's why. The fact that you're tuning into this lesson means that you're taking your business seriously. That you know that if your business is going to be wildly successful and thriving with the help of Dipsado, well, problems are going to also pop up. And so we have to take care of this legal stuff. But if you're like most of the business owners that I talk to, well, this is not exactly the stuff that you signed up for, that you were really excited about when you started your business. For most people, the legal stuff is boring or overwhelming or intimidating, and the list of other bad words just goes on and on. Don't worry, that's not gonna be this lesson. We're gonna rethink what legal means for your business in this short lesson and let you know how you can be using Dubsado to make sure that you're staying on the right side of the law. Buckle up, this is gonna be fun. All right, let's get started. This is owning it, how to keep your business protected and legally legit. Again, my name is Joey C. Vitale. I'm a lawyer, speaker, and growth strategist for all in entrepreneurs, coaches, and course creators. And I wouldn't be a good lawyer if I didn't kick things off with a good old legal disclaimer. This information is not legal advice. This does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. I am an attorney, but I'm not your attorney unless you want to change that after this presentation. But still, this information is going to be very helpful, very valuable, so keep leaning in. Let's go. My name's, again, Joey, and I'm not your average attorney. I'm the founder of Indie Law. We focus on trademark protections to make sure that our brands, that our, our clients, stay legally legit. I'm an Enneagram peacemaker, which means that, yes, I'm a lawyer who hates conflict. Uh, we, we do exist. I spent a couple of years really trying hard to be that shark in the courtroom, realized that was not a good fit for my personality. And now I just I love being a proactive business owner uh, attorney, helping business owners, online entrepreneurs make sure that they're not getting in the courtroom in the first place. And also, uh, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to Boy Meets World. I love that show so much that I even named my dog after Mr. Feeney. If you know the reference, we're good friends already. So <laughs> let's get started. Enough about me. Let's talk about you because I get it. Legal stuff can be really, really confusing. And so what I'm about to show you is the simplest legal strategy on the planet. Are you excited? Let's go. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys what I call my legal growth plan matrix. My students and my clients love this because it really breaks down where your current legal strategy is. And yes, whether you know it or not, you currently have a legal strategy. So on the vertical line here, this is the level of growth that you have and that you want for your business. Are you a high growth business or are you a low growth business? And then on the horizontal line, we've got the level of protection that you want to be in place for your business. Now, look, I know there are a lot of side hustlers, hobbyists, other people who put themselves in what I call the dabbling zone. This is where you are a low growth business who wants to stay a low growth business. And therefore, you don't really have a lot of protections in place. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with not wanting a lot of legal protections in place if you're in a low growth business, but I'm just going to say this. Serious business owners don't stay in the dabbling zone. It's not a very fun place to be in, and your business is never really going to turn into the business of your dreams if you stay there. So yeah, if you, if you stay there and if you want, want to build a business that is so small that it keeps you safe it might result in you staying safe, but it's not really gonna be worth it in, in my opinion, and I'm just looking out for you here because I've seen a lot of business owners regret when they look years back that they didn't want to aim any higher in business. Yes, you want your business to require you to have a, a high protection plan. So let's talk about this other exposure zone. This is a more obvious zone you wanna stay away from, but I wanna touch on it. Because when your business starts growing, well, then obviously you've got assets that are exposed if you don't think about protecting them. Think about this. When, when, uh, when an animal, and I'm thinking about my, my pets here in my apartment, when, when my cat all of a sudden starts sprinting around the house, 
what happened? My, my dog, Mr. Feeney, will, will look at him, right? And yes, my cat's name is also Corey Matthews. Again, I'm a huge Boy Meets World fan. But the point that I want to make here is that when you start making moves in business, big moves, and when you start getting more visible, people will watch you. They'll start to get more copycats. It's the nature of the game, and it's not something that you should avoid just because you want to stay protected, right? And so as your business is growing, you will just necessarily create a bigger target on your back. So that being said, I wanted to hit on this third zone too. This zone doesn't get talked about that much, but I know that a lot of smart business owners are in Dubsado, and so I really wanted to hammer this home because some of the smartest business owners that I know fall into this trap. You see, they're so smart, they're so thinking multiple steps ahead that they tend to get paranoid pretty easily. They're pretty risk averse. They really like the idea of getting all of their legal ducks in a row. The only problem with that is it is impossible to get every single one of your legal ducks in a row. You have an infinite number of ducks, of th possible threats to your business. And instead of trying to get, at, instead of trying to avoid all of the possible nightmare what ifs for your business, well, we need to just get clear on what those biggest risks are, which brings us to what I call the peaceful zone. This is what I want for all of you. When I say peaceful zone, I mean it like this. When you go to bed at night and you lock up your house or your apartment or whatever you got, maybe you turn on your alarm system, are you that afraid when you go to bed at night that someone's going to break in? Probably not, unless maybe you watched a scary movie or something. But it's this idea that if something pretty bad happens, well, you know you've got a protection plan in place. That's what I want for you. Your business will grow faster, easier, and in a more fun way if you're not always mentally worried about problems happening in your business. So having a high protection plan that matches your high growth plan allows you to be and stay in this peaceful zone. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, my, my clients and my students tend to find this really helpful to make sure that, okay, we want to be in the peaceful zone. So now the question is, how do we get there? Let's move on and find out. You see, there are two keys to business, and excuse my typo on this slide, but key number one is to act in alignment with where you want to go. And uh, what should be key number two is to be in alignment with who you want to become. In other words, we need to act and be in alignment with working towards being in that peaceful zone. The bottom line is that you need a legal plan that recognizes where you are now and aligns with where you're heading. Look, I 100% believe that your success is inevitable. Some of my favorite coaches say this all the time, and it's so true, it's so helpful. And I hope that you believe the same for yourself. But here's the thing, you can't <laughs> take all of the good without embracing some of the bad, right? When your success is inevitable, that means problems are also going to be inevitable. So let's focus on solving the biggest problems first. You see, most entrepreneurs are making this one huge mistake that puts their entire business in danger. And it's a pretty mistake, or a, a pretty uh, sneaky mistake. The mistake is I'll just deal with legal stuff when something bad happens. Have you ever said this to yourself? Or maybe you've, you've seen someone say something like this in a free Facebook group. Maybe you've even had a coach that you've paid good money for say, you know what, just focus on marketing and sales and deal with the legal stuff when something bad happens. We'll get to that later. Now, this is a problematic thing for you to tell yourself. And it's a little sneaky in why this is dangerous. It's, it's not really a mistake for the reasons that you might think. Let's dive into why this is problematic. You see, the first part of why this is an issue is what exactly do we mean when we say legal stuff? That's a pretty loaded, kind of confusing term, right? And look, you can be honest with me. Is this how you feel 
when people start talking about legal stuff? Do you just want to put your head in the sand whenever people mention LLCs, trademarks, copyrights, non-competes, non-disclosures, all this other stuff? Maybe you don't know exactly what all that stuff means, and you're like, you know what, this is just a lot of vocabulary I don't understand, so I just want to avoid it. And I am this way for a lot of things in my business. Facebook ads, bookkeeping, accounting. And so I, I can relate to a lot of you if you feel the same way about legal. And so what I want to offer you is if we can get your head out of the sand by making this language more in plain English and less legalish, wouldn't that help? So let's do that. Let's create a new framework of thinking about the law that doesn't make you want to put your head in the sand. Because really, if we zoom out and not just legal, but just business talk, your business has four foundational needs in order for your business to thrive and be successful. The first thing your business needs is a brand, meaning that your brand, your business is not a commodity. Look, everybody and their mom and their grandma and their grandpa is starting a business these days. And it's really easy to be a commodity right now. What's harder, yet this is where the, the success lies, is making people decide, you know what, there are options out there, but I want to go with this choice for this reason. When people walk down the cereal aisle version of your industry, what makes them choose you and not the competition? That packaging is your brand. Second, we need separation. I know I'm probably not the first person to tell you this, but you are not your business. Your sense of self-worth and your value are not tied to how good or bad the business is doing. And the sooner you can create that powerful separation so that no matter how the business is doing, you're not taking it personally, the better your business is going to be, the stronger it's going to be, the, the more fun running and building your business is going to be. So you've got to have that in place too. And then third, you need relationships. You need all kinds of relationships for your business to succeed, whether that's customers and clients or building a team or investing in an expert or a mastermind or a coach or a program like Dubsado, right? And then we've also got relationships in terms of all of our followers and fans on social media and even website visitors. We've got to manage all of those relationships, right, in order for our business to succeed. And then finally, we've got content. Now, maybe depending on what you sell, you give people content when they buy from you or your services. But even if that's not the case, we've all got to have content these days. Marketing, social media, website, you name it. We got to have content that we put out there so people know that we exist. You might be wondering, Joey, this is all cool, but what does this have to do with the legal stuff? The reason why I say this is because usually people expect there to be a, a fifth legal box with its own set of things that you need to do. That's not really how the law works. Really, there's just a legal counterpart to each one of these four things. So trademarks protect your brand. Trademarks protect things like your, your business name, logo, slogan, course name, uh, podcast if you have a podcast. The list can go on, but it's things, again, on that packaging of your cereal box that make people say, you know what, I want to buy from that person and not anybody else. It's when people hear your business name or your podcast name, they think of your brand specifically. Then it comes to getting an LLC or if you're really fancy, a corporation to get that separation in place. Because look, we can talk all day about how you are not your business. And we can talk about mindset work you can do and, and other things to, to really have that separation in place. But at the end of the day, if you're still a sole proprietor, if you haven't formed an LLC or a corporation, but probably an LLC for most people, well, you still legally are your business. And it can be really, really difficult to depend on that separation when you know at the end of the day that legally it's not true. And I've seen this transformation time and time again where businesses they just can think about their business more objectively and more powerfully 
once the LLC has been created. So if you haven't done that yet, I highly encourage you to do that. And then when it comes to relationships, this is where contracts come into place. For all of those big relationships, customers, contractors, employees, uh, working with a coach, working with the Sado, anything else, you should have strong contracts in place. Those contracts show the agreements and expectations of the parties. And then finally, when it comes to content, this one people kind of know is coming is copyrights. So copyrights protect your content. I hope that this was helpful because the rest of the presentation is going to build off of this. But instead of just saying, oh, I need legal stuff. Well, what legal stuff do we, exactly are we talking about here? Okay, so that's the first half of why this statement is a mistake. So now we have a better sense of what legal stuff means. But what about this whole like when something bad happens? That's the other reason why this sentence is dangerous. Because you see, before we can talk about protecting your business and your brand, we have to have a very serious conversation about something else entirely. It's time that we have to redefine a certain word. And this is a word that for a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of entrepreneurs, this is usually a core value. Even if it's not stated, this is something that means a lot to you. Any ideas on what this word is? It's not, it's not honor or honesty or any of those words, but it's kind of similar to it. It's integrity. You see, integrity is an interesting word. Because if I were to say, hey, you're a person of integrity or you're not a person of integrity, what does that mean about you, right? You see, a lot of us, myself included, have been trained to really lean into this one definition of integrity that's like, if you're a person of integrity, well, then like you deserve a statue of yourself with wings on it, right? Because you're a good, honest, moral person. If, if you have integrity, it means that you're like a, a Disney hero. And if you don't have integrity, it means that you're like a Disney villain, right? So that is one definition of integrity. But it's not very helpful. If this is a value for you as a business owner, let's look at some other definitions of what this means and redefine what integrity means for our business. So instead of thinking about this statue with wings as having integrity, what about this? What about this bike having integrity? You see, now it's less about ethics and morals and being a good person and being honest and fair and all that stuff. It's about like, this bike has integrity if it works. Like, do you trust to get on it and ride it? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Is it whole? That's what I mean when I talk about integrity. And it changes the game. Because now we can say, legally speaking, does your business have integrity? Does it have effectiveness, workability when it comes to these four things? So let's examine what we mean here. Because when we talk about brand integrity, are you really who you say you are? Because without trademarks in place, well, you might be accidentally infringing on somebody else. Going back to that cereal box metaphor, right? If you are saying, oh, this is the name of my business, but you haven't gotten, if you haven't claimed a registered trademark for yourself yet, there's a really good chance that you're infringing on somebody else, especially with how saturated the online space is and you're not realizing it. Now, look, I don't think anybody here would intentionally copy and infringe on another company's brand, but it's something that you have to be on the lookout for. Over 10,000 trademarks get applied for every single week. That's over half a million a year, which is scary in itself. But over half of them get denied and the biggest reason why trademark applications get denied is because they're too similar to another trademark so you really want to think okay have i really secured a distinctive brand for my company and a quick uh, a quick tip here people sometimes ask okay joey what's the deal with these symbols there's this circle r symbol and the tm symbol and sometimes this sm symbol what's going on here so a, a free tip here is that you can use the TM symbol, or if you're fancy, the SM symbol, right now for free. You see, the, 
this is kind of confusing, but stay with me. There are multiple layers of trademark rights here in the US. And just by being in business, just by launching your, your website and having customers, you technically have trademark rights. The problem is those trademark rights are pretty weak if you don't register for them at the national level. So they only give you rights in your geographic region. So bigger than a city, smaller than a state. And because of those different levels, they've created different symbols for those trademark levels. And so a lot of people, they or a lot of people should want the circle R symbol. That means that you've got a registered trademark, you've applied for it for the government, they said yes. When you, when you see the circle R symbol, you know you've got to take that brand super seriously. But a TM symbol is something that you can use right now for free. You don't have to apply for anything. So if you haven't yet added a TM symbol or any other type of a trademark symbol to your business name, logo, slogan, whatever, feel free to add this on there. It's, it can be a really strong deterrent to let other brands know that you understand how the, this symbol system works and you are claiming what are called common law trademark rights. You could, if you want to be fancy, use the SM symbol, which technically stands for service mark. So if you sell a service, you should be using that instead of a TM, but that's kind of an outdated symbol strategy. So if you've already got the SM symbol, feel free to keep it. Otherwise, by all means, use the TM symbol, but don't, don't just wait on that because the easiest, most efficient way to make sure that you're not accidentally infringing on somebody else is to move forward with your own trademarks. Uh, my firm Indie Law can help you if you want more information on that. But again, wanted to give you this free, easy tip of just slapping that TM symbol wherever you want. You don't have to file anything to use it. Which brings us to the second piece of integrity here, separation integrity. Are you literally not your business? Because again, if you haven't formed an LLC yet, well, you legally are your business. So let's do what we got to do to give you that separation integrity. A quick note on here too, and this is Dubsado specific, uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make uh, across the board with Dubsado and any type of a contract form technology for business owners is they tend to just put their name and then have their clients sign it, which can be problematic, especially if you're in a B2B space. So I wanted to show you this example here of, uh, a, and, and Claire Flood is still on my team, she's amazing, so I use this. Uh, so what, what we've done here, you wanna be careful with your signature blocks. If you are an LLC or a corporation, that you're tweaking that so that the name of your business is the party that is agreeing to the contract, and then you are signing on behalf of the company. I showed this example here because the contractor, Claire, she was signing this personally. So you can see that that's just her name, she's signing as it. Again, if you have formed an LLC, you wanna make sure, number one, that all of your contracts, you've changed the signature block, so it's the company and not you personally that is entering into all of these agreements. And if you are in a B2B space, it's a good idea to create different versions of your contract so that if people are signing as sole proprietors or as consumers, well, then they can sign in that capacity. And if you are really working with LLCs, corporations, whatever it is, well, you can have a different version of your contract or contract template so that they are signing on behalf of the business that is really the party to the contract. Hope that that was helpful. That's, that's a really big, quick, easy win here in Dubsado. Okay, which brings us to that fourth piece of integrity, relationship integrity. Are you honoring your promises? I used uh, this picture here of the engagement wedding rings because so often when we think about contracts, we're only thinking about protecting our own butts. And I get it, and that language should be there. But a good contract isn't just about keeping yourself safe. It's also about getting clear on what the shared expectations are and letting your client, your customer know what you're gonna fulfill on. And you can see examples of that in Dubsado. You, you wanna be specific 
in as specific as you can be in your contract about what it is that you're going to do. Again, a contract isn't just about being one-sided so that you're protected, but you also want to think about the best interests of your clients and your customers. I like to think about this as we're creating a red carpet experience for our clients, and this level of specificity allows us to make sure that we are keeping the client on the red carpet. So here is an example from a graphic design, a web design contract template that's inside Dubsado. This was a really good example of saying for graphic design projects, we will deliver to you the digital files containing the final project deliverables. And it gives a time frame within seven business days. They're going to be delivered in these formats for then website development projects. They're also going to be within seven days. Right. So it's not just about we're going to be protected in these cases. It's also about here's what we say we're going to do for you. Are you honoring? Are you including promises in your contract that are on your end inside your contract? And are you honoring them? That is a huge part of having integrity when it comes to relationships. And then finally, I wanted to hit on this content integrity. Are you getting permission to use other people's stuff. And I say this because we're in a space right now where a lot of nice people don't realize that they're committing copyright infringement on the daily. You see, there's something that's really popular right now, and it's done with really good intentions, where you're inspired by someone's post or you're promoting something and you you repost their image or their graphic or whatever, but you give them credit. And I see this all the time. People are like, oh, I'm giving this person credit or I'm, I'm tagging the, the Instagram handle or whatever it is. That's all fine and good, but giving credit is not the same thing as getting permission. And unless you've gotten permission to share other people's works, you could be committing content. You could be committing copyright infringement and you'd be falling out of content integrity. And and I say that because, look, I know that the team at Dubsado is super attractive and you, you might be inspired to just pull images from their site, from their Instagram, whatever. And, and you might want to talk to them before you do it, right? Just, and maybe they'll be okay with saying, hey, yeah, share this away. Make sure that you, you know, drop a, a link or a tag, whatever. But let's make sure that you get that permission up front because technically Dubsado owns the copyright to graphics like this. All right, are we on the same page there? Good. So, Back to this question of does your business have integrity? I know we're so used to integrity being not really a, an objective type of a question. Usually this is more emotional. Our, our egos start to flare up. Maybe your, your spidey senses started tingling when I said, like, does your business have integrity? Because it's like, no, no one wants to admit that we're, that we're not people of integrity, right? That's a, that's a big, heavy statement. I encourage you not to make this a heavy question. It doesn't have to be because we're not talking about good, bad, moral, immoral, right? We're just talking about how workable is your business. And I hope this is helpful because the truth is no business has 100% integrity. You see, your business really starts thriving and growing and, and being a more effortless to run business when you realize It's not a question of, does my business have integrity? It's a question of where am I, where is my business still out of integrity and how can I fix it? And that's a never ending journey. So I encourage you to ask yourself, where are you out of integrity right now in terms of your business, your brand? with trademarks and maybe being an accidental infringer, not locking down and securing that you are who you say you are. Maybe you're out of integrity to an extent with separation because you either haven't formed an LLC or a corporation, or you haven't included that in the signature blocks of your your, uh, contracts inside Dubsado. Maybe there's some out of integrity-ness there. Or relationships and contracts. Are you... 
out of integrity with really getting clear with what your responsibilities are to people who are working with you and spelling those out clearly in the contract and then delivering on the back end. And then in terms of content and copyrights, is there anywhere where you're out of integrity, where you've been giving credit to people for photos and other things, but you haven't really reached out and gotten permission? I hope that that was a helpful, complete reframe of what all this legal stuff means. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you. I hope that that was helpful. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, if, if me or my team can help build back in some legal integrity to your business. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much, Joey, for that fantastic presentation. It is important to know how to cover yourself from the legal side and how that ties into the content and communication side as well. But Joey did want us to let you know that he is offering a $300 discount that can be used for Indie Law's all-in-one flat fee trademark package. And if you are interested in finding out more information about that, we are going to link more info down below in this lesson. Uh, but to get the discount, all you'll need to do when you're checking out is use the code Dubzato Rocks, and while you're checking out, that will activate the $300 discount for you. Thank you.